we never and we still aren't coming to this movie, Ryan and Hugh and I, we're not looking to save anything. You've been chosen for a higher purpose. To be a hero among heroes. The Marvel Universe is about to change forever. Ever since Avengers Endgame brought the Infinity Saga to an end, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been a little all over the place. There's been boundary-pushing experiments like WandaVision and Loki, but we've also had the likes of Eternals, Thor Love and Thunder, and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, all of which received a vocal, sour response from fans. When the low points have been as disappointing as they have been, and with no highs to contend with the likes of Infinity War and The Winter Soldier, it's no wonder the overall quality of the MCU is being questioned by fans. Marvel is totally aware of that conversation. In fact, it's even a reoccurring joke in Deadpool and Wolverine, the 34th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But will this R-rated curveball be the film to reignite the franchise? And is the director behind it, Sean Levy, the man to save the MCU from its recent misfortunes? We spoke to him directly to find out. So sit back, relax, while we travel to a place where grown men and women walk around in tights and act like it's not a giant cultural cry for help. During the opening act of Deadpool and Wolverine, the titular Merc with a mouth cracks a joke about the MCU being at a bit of a low point, and later suggests that the ongoing multiverse saga has been miss after miss. They are gags of the recent fan sentiment firmly in their crosshairs. Well, I'll say this. Certainly we're commenting on the dialogue. Every time we turn in a draft of the script, it would contain like a dozen or more jokes that were subversive or making fun of or certainly aware of Marvel and Disney and these genre and kind of real world studio politics. Those are bold targets for this threequel to mark. Previously, when the Deadpool movies were made by 20th Century Fox, they could get away with poking fun at the MCU. Zip it, Thanos. We have a deal and you fuck ah! But Deadpool and Wolverine is made by Marvel Studios itself. Surely Kevin Feige, the head honcho of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, wouldn't be okay with one of his own films making fun of his franchise's misfortunes? Time and again, Kevin, both supportively and I think smartly, his only rule was make it funny. If it's funny, and even if I'm the subject of the joke, go for it. It was near absolute creative autonomy. And I think the movie has the audacious spirit it has because we were so empowered to go guns blazing. To go guns blazing requires a genuine target, and as Levy said, the movie comments on the dialogue. That means the creators of Deadpool and Wolverine recognize that there's a genuine conversation happening about the quality of the MCU, and that they want to be a part of it. But if you're going to make fun of that conversation, well, you can't certainly do that successfully in an MCU film that sucks. So, did Sean Levy come onto the project with the aim of restoring reliable quality to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? We're not looking to save anything. We are looking to contribute to the MCU. As we've been making the movie, you can't ignore the fact that the cultural dialogue is loud around the MCU and these films. And it wouldn't be a Deadpool movie if we didn't take the cultural conversation and throw in our two cents. And so indeed, that's one of a few lines and moments and jokes where we are commenting on the genre, even as we are hopefully contributing something meaningful to it, but also taking the piss out of it. Wanna do some cocaine? Hey, cocaine is the one thing that Feige said is off limits. What about Bolivian marching powder? They know all the slang terms. They have a list. Even snowboarding? Even disco dust. White girl interrupter? Even forest bump. Do you wanna build a snowman? Yes, but I can't. While Levy may not have any ambitions of saving the MCU with Deadpool and Wolverine, the legacy of the films that came before meant that there was plenty of pressure to get this movie right. The truth is, the pressure on me is I know the love for Deadpool. I know the love for Logan. I know it because I have it. When Ryan asked me to do this movie with him, I knew that this movie has to be better than great because Deadpool 1 and 2 are great. Logan is a masterpiece. We put our reverence in the movie. It's not just what we feel on set, it's part of the storytelling. Disney brought him back. They're gonna make him do this till he's 90. It was really cathartic and I think quite interesting to integrate our real world thinking about the Marvel legacy and build it into how we wrote the plot. But the pressure is fan expectation fan adoration. Fans came to adore the MCU because not only did it frequently deliver what die-hard comic lovers wanted from live-action Marvel stories, but it also consistently surprised them. 
Nobody was asking for a comedic Thor movie from the director of a few New Zealand indie films, but Taika Waititi's Ragnarok instantly became an MCU classic. And so for Levy, the goal was to go above and beyond what fans expected of a third Deadpool movie. We have been relentless in making every part of this movie great and then going further. But hopefully it's a movie that's as funny as people want, it's as action-packed as people want, but it's also got a warmth. That may be its most subversive aspect and the part of this movie that people are expecting the least. I'm about to lose everything that I've ever cared about. Not my fucking problem. Is that what you said when your world went to shit? Come again. Alongside trying to deliver on what fans do and don't expect, Levy also looked back over the history of the MCU to identify its greatest strengths. It's the universe's inherent diversity that allowed the director to easily craft a story that suited its protagonists. I love that the MCU has always been able to contain subgenre storytelling. Ragnarok is wildly different than Black Panther, which is wildly different than Iron Man. I love the diversity of genre, the diversity of tone and voice in Marvel movies. So I feel like the opportunity here was Deadpool and Wolverine. Yes, it's iconic anti-heroes joint together for the first time, but it's also very much in the paradigm of those buddy cop movies, right? Those odd couple pairings where you have two characters completely ill-suited to each other who are forced together. And that's a great recipe for comedy, for conflict, for action, and ultimately for a story that has the possibility of redemption for both characters. Deadpool and Wolverine might deliver more than just redemption for its characters, though. If it proves to be a hit, it may be the film that redeems the MCU in the eyes of fans who feel like it's dipped in quality. And if that's the case, those fans will likely want to see Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman back on their screens. All being well, could Deadpool and Wolverine be the start of something bigger for the MCU? I love these characters so much. I love these performers, these actors, these stars, these icons. I don't know what the future holds. I will say this, we very intentionally did not want to make a Marvel movie that is a commercial or a setup for the next Marvel movie. So we are not part of any phase that I know of. We acknowledge the antecedents, we respect the legacy that we're inheriting, but our goal was to do a self-contained story. As to whether these characters move on from here, time will tell, but I'd sure love to see it and I'd also love to be a part of it. If Deadpool and Wolverine proves to be the most fan-approved MCU movie since Endgame, there'll no doubt be calls for Levy to return. Can we expect him to get behind the camera for another Marvel project in the future? I have had the time of my life making this movie, so I, I do, I think Marvel and I are not done with each other, that I will say. As to the where and when, we'll see. <laughs> Everybody knows. From what we've seen already, Deadpool and Wolverine is on track to be the best Marvel film in half a decade. While Sean Levy may not have been assigned any kind of mission to bring the MCU back from the brink, if Deadpool's latest adventure can hit anywhere close to the highs of the Infinity Saga, then it will undoubtedly reignite interest and hope in Marvel's long-running series. Sean Levy may not believe himself to be the savior of the MCU, but he may well be the shot in the arm Marvel needs. Oh, you nicked it. Just got the tip with your little steak knife. For more from Deadpool and Wolverine, you're already in the right place with IGN. Stop it.